Hello children, I welcome you all to our special English hour. Here we learn lots of new things and we have fun while learning these things. Are you all ready for some fun? Let's get started. Children, you all know that it is very important for all of us to learn new words. So now, let's learn some new words. You will see these words in the story when we read it. So I request you to please make a note of these words in your notebooks. Dreadful 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 The thought of staying alone is very dreadful. Lurking 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 He was lurking behind the wall. Tremendous 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 There was a tremendous amount of rainfall. Quivering 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 The dog was quivering after staying out in the cold. Mingled 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 She had mingled with her far off cousins throughout the summer vacation. Children, today we will read a story. The name of the story is Chasing the Sea Monster. I request you to please open page number 97 of your textbook. Now I will be reading this story for you and I request you to point at the words as I read them. And if you don't have a textbook, listen to me carefully. Our frigate wanted to go back. But the unearthly animal came at us with a speed double our own. We gasped, more stunned than afraid. We stood mute and motionless. The animal caught up with us, played with us. It made a full circle around the frigate and wrapped us in sheets of electricity that were like luminous dust. At any instant, it could have dashed against our ship. Meanwhile, I was surprised to see that our warship was fleeing, not fighting. I commented on this to Commander Farragut. His face, ordinarily so, emotionless showed great astonishment. In this paragraph, the writer is talking about a war-like situation. And how do I know that? Because the writer mentions frigate. A frigate is a small ship that is used during war. Professor Aranax he answered me, I don't know what kind of fearsome creature I am up against and I don't want my frigate running foolish risks in all this darkness. Besides, 
how should we attack this unknown creature? How should we defend ourselves against it? Let's wait for daylight and then we'll play a different role. The whole crew stayed on their feet all night long. No one even thought of sleeping. Unable to compete with the monster's speed, our frigate, the Abraham Lincoln, slowed down. For its part, the animal mimicked the frigate, simply rode with the waves, but did not leave the field of battle. It was dark in the night and there was nothing but darkness that all the members could see. Which is why the captain of the ship decides that it is best to defend ourselves against this animal in the daylight. However, near midnight, it disappeared or to use a more appropriate expression, it went out like a huge glow worm. Had it fled? Tell me, Ned Land, isn't that the noise Cartesians make when they spurt water from their blowholes? The very noise, sir, but this one's way louder. So there can be no mistake. There's definitely a whale lurking in our waters. Near two o'clock in the morning, the core of light reappeared, five miles away from the Abraham Lincoln. We stayed on the alert until daylight, getting ready for action. Whaling gear was set up along the railings. Our chief officer loaded the blunderbusses which can launch harpoons as far as a mile and long duck guns with exploding bullets that can wound and kill even the most powerful animals. Ned Land was content to sharpen his harpoon, a dreadful weapon in his hands. When the commander heard the noise, he thought that it was a cetacean. A cetacean is an animal that lives in water and it is as big as a whale. So the commander thought that the noise was of a whale. But they decided to wait till daylight. At six o'clock, day began to break. And with the dawn's early light, the animal's electric glow disappeared. At seven o'clock, a very dense morning mist spread around us. Our best spy glasses were unable to pierce it. The outcome? Disappointment and anger. At eight o'clock, the mist rolled away and the horizon grew wider and clearer. Suddenly, Ned Land's voice could be heard. There's the thing in question. Aston to port. The harpooner shouted. Every eye looked toward the point indicated. There, a mile and a half from the frigate, a long blackish body emerged a meter above the waves, quivering violently. Its tail was creating a considerable current. At six o'clock, the day began to break. And as the day was breaking, the light of the beast had started going out. But at seven o'clock in the morning, there was 
a mist and nobody could pierce through the mist which means that nobody could see anything but at 8 o'clock in the morning the mist cleared and now they could see what was in front of them one and a half mile away they saw the beast and this beast was emerging from underwater to above it and its tail was passing current this beast was dark and huge the crew were waiting impatiently for orders from their leader the latter after carefully observing the animal ordered the engineer to sail full steam towards the animal three cheers greeted this order the hour of battle had sounded a few moments later the abraham lincoln headed straight for the animal unconcerned it allowed the frigate to come in its direction however the beast was trying to keep its distance and now the beast had started moving the beast was moving in full speed and it looked like it was going to be difficult not for the beast but for the frigate the frigate was not able to match the speed of this beast the abraham lincoln gathered speed but so did the animal this went on for the next hour the abraham lincoln was now speeding so much that its masts trembled down their blocks what a chase no i can't describe the excitement that shook my very being ned land stayed at his post harpoon in hand several times the animal let us approach then just as the harpooner was about to strike the cetacean would steal off swiftly commander farragut then decided to use more direct methods now the beast was moving at full speed but so were the people in the frigate whenever the frigate tried to approach the beast it let it approach but when somebody was ready with their arms and ready to shoot the beast caught its speed once again ba he said so that animal is faster than the abraham lincoln all right mate man the gun in the bow our forecastle cannon was immediately loaded and leveled the cannoneer fired a shot but his shell passed some feet above the cetacean which stayed half a mile off over to somebody with better aim the commander shouted and 500 dollars to the man who can pierce that infernal beast calm of eye cool of feature an old gray bearded gunner i can see him to this day approached the cannon put it in position and took aim for a good while there was a mighty explosion mingled with cheers from the crew the shell reached its target it hit the animal but bounced off its rounded surface and vanished into the sea 2 miles out 
the commander had decided to take direct action. So the cannon was loaded. Oh drat! said the old gunner in his anger. That monster must be covered with six inch armor plate. The hunt was on again. Hour after hour went by without the animal showing the least sign of weariness. However, it must be said that we too struggled on tirelessly. At 10.50 in the evening, that electric light reappeared three miles away from the frigate. Just as clear and intense as the night before. The monster seemed motionless. Was it asleep perhaps? Weary from its work day? Just riding with the waves? This was our chance and Commander Farragut decided to take full advantage of it. He gave his orders. The commander had ordered the people on the frigate to continue attacking the beast. But the beast did not show any signs of defense or attack. And this went on for the entire day. At 10.50 pm in the night, the light appeared on the beast. And now the, everyone thought that the beast is asleep because it had stopped moving. The crew thought that this was the correct time to attack the beast. Let's see what happens next. The frigate approached without making a sound, stopped two cable lengths from the animal. A profound silence reigned over the deck. We were not hundred feet from the blazing core of the light, whose glow grew stronger and dazzled the eyes. Just then, leaning over the forecastle railing, I saw Ned Land below me, brandishing his dreadful harpoon. Barely 20 feet separated him from the motionless animal. All at once, his arm shot forward and the harpoon was launched. I heard the weapon make a ringing sound as if it had hit some hard substance. The electric light because of which the frigate was destroyed and everyone on the frigate was thrown back into the sea. So children, this was the story and the name of the story was Chasing the Sea Monster. Now children, I explained the story to you. Did you like it? Wasn't it a bit different than any story that you have read? Children, I told you about the monster and how the people on the ship were trying to chase this monster. Were you able to guess who this monster was? Yes, it was a submarine. A submarine is a ship that sails under the water. But everyone thought that this was a monster because it was stronger and heavier than the ship. So here in this lesson the monster was a submarine. Wasn't it an interesting story? I hope that you liked it. Children, I hope you enjoyed today's session and I hope that you सह्याद्री वाहिनी प्रत्येक घरासाठी घरातल्या प्रत्येकासाठी